I went to um, two, three places, could see a few modifications and then, it, then there was no turning back. So I think uh, um, uh, I put most of my, in my most of my endothelial keratoplasty studies I, uh, in the uh, talks, I usually put this picture because I think endothelial keratoplasty uh, is uh, one of the procedures where uh, there has been a very great uh, evolution. So in the last 10 years since uh, 1998 or 1995 when Melis uh, founded DSEC, I think almost in uh, two decades, there have been so much, so much of changes uh, coming in DMAC and uh, uh, then PDAC, a lot of, lot of things have come. So actually uh, each one shows its superiority and uh, uh, DMAC has its own advantages over DSEC. And uh, for the basic beginners, uh, I think we all of us know that even though the problem was lying only in the endothelium, we were always replacing the entire five layers of the cornea. It was only uh, in um, 1998, actually, Mellis was the first person who wanted to uh, do a different way. That is, he uh, termed it as DSEK, decimate stripping endothelial keratoplasty, where a portion of the stroma along with the decimates was transplanted. So later he thought, why there is an additional stroma? Why can't this, only the DM can be transplanted? And that's how the concept of uh, decimates membrane endothelial keratoplasty actually came in place. So actually it has a very steep uh, learning curve. Um, uh, we are, as I told you, we had a lot of problems because donor preparation, because DM is very well adherent um, uh, to the stroma and uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, hemidesmosome. So removing the DM, a lot of times we've had these problems. Uh, so uh, it's, a, it's a surgeon's nightmare. So injecting also, we have had all these problems. Uh, the sizing of the tunnel. And initially you see here, there's no marking, there's no orientation, which side it is, and we used to play around with it. So these were the causes. Uh, uh, initially we had a lot of failures. Even sizing the graft was very, very important. So if we, when we did uh, the first 20, 30 cases, we never had an idea what we were doing in 2013 and 14. And uh, uh, that's when then we stopped, we refined ourselves and then uh, we came to a, a certain protocols. So here, before going in, the anatomy of the DM scroll is very important because as I show you here, uh, the DM scrolls on itself. So always the endothelium is out. So that's why you most of the times there's so much of endothelial damage. And here I can show you that when you put a taco fold with the endothelium inside, so really uh, it's, a real, it's a real dynamic uh, happening here where you can see that I put a taco fold, the endothelium is inside and you see it snaps open and endothelium comes out. So this is the reason why when we do DMAC, a lot of endothelial cell loss happens because the endothelium is outside. So, when we are doing the uh, um, uh, first dissection, we are removing the DM. This is what happens. Most of the times we are very scared. And when we start doing DMAC, such tears happen. And, uh, uh, and that's it. We feel very comfortable with DSEC and we never uh, think what's the problem. So I just play the uh, surgery again. You can see here, there is a small tag here. As I'm pulling, you can see as it goes to the tag, it tears. So it's just that you have to know what to do when there is a tag and you have to be very, very careful. You have to uh, keep watching what happens. So this is a technique which I use. Like I use a 10 mm uh, uh, trephine just to mark the DM about 100 microns. And then with the Sinsky, you see that I just try to lift the um, DM. You can see here that I just try to lift the DM here. So 360 degree, I try to remove the DM, uh, the tip, and then it's a one pull technique. Sometimes this is actually very easy to be shown, but when real, when you're doing, you can see here when I'm pulling, keep looking at the sides and here you can see that there is a tag. So we always have to, when you pull, you have to see at both the ends and I can show you here, there is a little bit of addition here and just you have to see the addition there. And you just need to a little bit pull it, see that you know, the tag is there. So then it releases. And this is almost a 40 year old tissue. If you're doing the regular single pull, it will tear. So see the addition, see that actually lifts up the stroma you know that there's a very good attachment here. So you have to go at that place and try lifting it rather than doing a, um, a regular uh, single pull technique. So you have to go here, you can see the, the, the stroma actually coming up. That is the adherence of the DM to the stroma. So these tissues, when you're doing around 40, 45 year old tissue, you have to be very careful and meticulous. Don't worry about touching the periphery because you're going to punch in center 8 mm. 
and this area of endothelial cell loss nothing to worry but you have to make sure that you have to uh, re release most of the areas when you are doing a dissection in a young tissue so once this is done so this is very similar like you have to put it uh, like a taco and then this is the stromal part there is no dm and you put the uh, saline put the dm back and open the window so here uh, there are a lot of things like um, people do an s mark there are so many marks people use so from the first from 2013 14 we have been using this l mark so i made a, a, a normal this thing where there is a horizontal is it's shorter and vertically it is longer and you can actually see that uh, when when in the orientation of the eye this is how it has to be there when you attach the dm so whenever you if you whenever you see this position this is the right position even when it rotates you always see even if it rotates whichever position make sure that the position the shorter arm you orient yourself for the shorter arm so that the l is very clearly seen so you can put s you can put lot of things why why i found find this is very comfortable is because in scarred corneas in very hazy corneas you may not be able to see this very s very clearly you may not be able to see the entire s here what i usually see is even if it's scarred i just see this portion i don't i forget i don't see this portion i just see whether this is in the right side of the vertical uh, arm so it's very easy so it depends on people put an f f dot lot of things people can do whatever which is comfortable this is a simple injector for beginners so this is a very 1 cc syringe and it's an uh, paco tubing so i cut a small bit of an iv tubing and then it's put into one side and this is a regular c cartridge just a regular iol c cartridge you can cut the tip and then you can put it right into this uh, uh, the other end and that's it a simple injector is made so rather than going for very costly injector is very simple this is what we have been using for the last 400 500 cases and this is this is iol tub for putting the dm in and the only important thing is take fill this 1 cc syringe with saline without any air bubble and you can see that very smoothly it usually comes in and you have to be very careful when you are sucking it because uh, you don't have any valve here just to slow this thing usually it comes so key points here is when you prepare for the um, uh, in the recipient please remove the uh, epithelium even if it is very clear because the epithelium is a diseased epithelium it's not very the, the attachments are very poor so pre operatively um, uh, when you are doing it in the uh, on table it's better to remove for the for the better view and then when the keratome you have to go a single way i i think i can even show you once again that it should be a single entry don't make any tunnel just go with a single entry so that when you inject it's okay and same way when you enter make sure this is a 2.8 keratome make sure at least it's 3 or 3.2 and you can put two side ports it's very important to put two side ports one at 12 and one at 6 then once you remove the dm put pilocarpin so that the pupil constricts and you do a small pi usually i do a vertical vertical slit not a oval because when the air bubble little bit gets released the pupillary block chances are very less with a vertical pupil because it clear covers more of a surface area and as i told you when the tunnel is very tight see this is what happens when the tunnel is very tight Um, when you inject when you remove out the saline comes through an arrow portion the dm gets stuck so that's why when i showed you enter and left and right you just little bit make it 3.2 so that the saline when you are removing the uh, injector out the saline leaks out through the other edge so that there is no problem so here again um, uh, you can see here uh, most of the times we forget what you are doing here the ac is actually shallow actually the iol is in the bag only but i am not able to inject see the iris is almost okay but when i start injecting it's not actually going and i see that the iris is coming up so here i am trying to put a saline through this portion but still uh, even after injecting saline you see i am not able to inject it so what is what is the problem here so here the tunnel is little bit small slightly extend the tunnel and there is a lot of post to pressure so just see just release the speculum little bit so these are very key things so if you don't do this it will come out so i just did it and see the eye is very soft and it goes in these are very very small key points which is very important in your learning phase and also sizing is very important because when you have a pupil of around 5 mm or something like that you, this is a 7 mm graft to take a 5 5.5 mm pupil it will not unfold because the 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 dm will get attached to the rim and it will not get uh, uh, it will not open so dm sizing is very very important when you are doing and here i'll show you almost a 6 6.5 mm uh, pupil 
uh, I'm able to do, uh, you can see the size of the graft. The graft is almost 8 mm. You can see that it is in the periphery. So the thing is that the periphery acts as a hinge, you see here. So the, if you if you have taken a small um, uh, DM, it would have got opposed to the edge and been a lot of issues here. So you see, once you take a larger graft, depending, you take the face of the graft according to the corneal size as well as as the pupil, you see very gentle taps, usually it opens. So sizing is very important. See the pupil size, see the cornea size. Don't decide you will do take only 8 or 8.25 or 7. Um, make sure that you measure the uh, cornea and see the when you start doing uh, surgery, these are all, don't do all these heroic things. Don't take young tissues. So I'm just showing here what not to do. It's a young tissue. It's a post vitretomized eye, uh, iris cloud. Cases, see the cigar thing scroll uh, happening, uh, uh, cigar type scroll happening in the uh, eye. It's very difficult to unfold uh, in these type of cases, in these type of tissues. And you see that as I try to open up the eye, the eye is very soft, you can see, post vitretomized So opening this is, uh, is very tricky. And even if you open these tissues, the amount of endothelial cell loss is very huge and the chance of success is less. So don't, when you're, when you're starting, don't try all these type of uh, things like young tissue, vitretomized eye. Don't make sure that you have a proper pseudophagic eye uh, with a good iris so that when you do it, you get the confidence. So this is how a 70-year-old tissue with very, very good count. Okay, so when you have a 70-year-old tissue, this is how it's actually very uh, simple to do the procedure because already a uh, very stiff uh, uh, DM, uh, which can easily unfold. See, once you inject, it usually unfolds and you don't even need to put a suture because such a way it just starts to unfold. And when you start doing a few DMAX and when you get this type of confidence, then you can go for slightly younger age. When you start, you can use around 60, 65, 70. So this is the uh, um, uh, one disadvantage of DMAC and advantage of PDEC where you can really do very young tissues. Again here, uh, one or two uh, uh, techniques which we were doing because unfolding is very, very important um, uh, uh, portion in a DMAC. So once you inject, always put one suture. So that is very, very important. Without putting a suture, do not manipulate your DM because uh, it will definitely come out. So always put one suture. I usually put a little bit tight, see that little bit of dimpling. And uh, you see here, just a saline. Just put a little bit of saline. This is an older technique which we used to do. Tapping, see that intense tapping happening there. So this is how we initially started. So we usually tap, inject a little bit of saline, make a space for the DM to unfold. And then you can see here again, tapping here. And then very gentle tapping. You see that the, 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 the DM starts to unfold. And as you showed, you can see that L mark here very clearly. You can see the L marking here with the short length here. The anterior chamber with anterior, uh, the chamber with, and uh, nowadays there are few techniques which we follow. You can see here again, there are two three methods which we do here. So here one one as I showed you the first that you can just tap. The second one is you can with the left hand you can hold and then with the right hand you can just wriggle the DM. This is also one type which stops to it's, which which there is a chance of opening here. So these are various types so that I don't want to just show you what we are doing now. These were all transitions, what we did before. So you can see that with both hands, you can roll over. Very gentle taps. Don't do very, very violent or vigorous taps. Gentle taps, usually it opens very well. And, uh, and this is another case which I'm showing you. This is a technique we generally use now. Left hand, you hold the, hold the tissue and with right hand, you can again see this one actually I'm trying to unfold. It's not opening here. See, you can see here. So what this is another technique where I would like to show you where you can hold with the left hand and you can something known as a hold and release technique where you can go in, inject saline and shallow, inject saline and shallow. You can see that inject saline, shallow it, inject saline and shallow it and it opens up very well. So this is the technique which currently we are using it. I will be showing you a few more um, uh, videos where it, where it usually happens very well. Uh, so this is a case of a young patient. Uh, I did a, uh, again a DMAC. That's why I done a scleral uh, incision here. So again, see, I'm holding with the left hand. I'm injecting saline. 
and in shallowing, as I shallow, you can see how very beautifully it opens because in that portion, you can see here again, I'm injecting saline and I'm a little bit shallowing the anterior chamber and then I'm just releasing it. So by that, this is actually a wave because you inject saline, the space is created. And then when you flat, when you flatten it, this, the fluid wave pushes the iris towards the, uh, the DM towards the tunnel. So it opens up. So again here, the point here is make it horizontal because when it's vertical, it's difficult to open. So try to make it horizontal here. So you, that's the key thing. Try to make it horizontal. If it's not opening a little bit shallow the anterior chamber and then you can push it to one side and then hold it with, with the left hand and then release it. So this is the technique which we use uh, nowadays very frequently. You can see that if it even if it gets decentered, you can pull it to push it to one side, hold it, inject saline, shallow the anterior chamber, inject the saline, shallow the anterior chamber, and you see how well it opens up. Just one way it opens up. Sometimes what happens is it may not open. I'm just a little bit forwarded for the time this thing. So here what happens is it's not uh, unfolding even after that uh, shallow and antigeny. Two, three times you try. If it, if sometimes what happens is the, the edges would have got stuck. So in this question, almost 90% of your graft is open. So don't just keep trying. Uh, you can, in this question, what you can do is or just hold the tissue and with air, you can easily unfold it. See, I just going inside that is not opening. So I, I put air, it, unlike DSAC, it will not open up because it's already stuck. So what usually you should do here is put air, release the air and inject saline, release the air much beyond that area of fold. And now see that air will open it up. See that, so now the air will open it up. So this is a, also one technique where if it's not opening, you can put air and release it. And even in grafts, I just wanted to put this uh, picture as a uh, video is because grafts, you have to take at least one mm smaller than the uh, original graft size. Because if you take more size, if it overlaps the edge, then the DM will not get opposed. So as you see here, it's almost a total graft, but I'm using a graft and uh, of a size about 0.25 or even uh, 0.5 mm smaller than the graft. So not all the, all the times it opens up beautifully. Sometimes it opens up on the wrong side. So what happens if it opens on the wrong side? So here, what happens is I'm till now, I don't know what, which side it is. So I open it up and I see the L mark is on the wrong side. So with the left hand, I hold and I inject the saline under, just keep looking what happens below. And you see that the flap opens up, the inner flap opens to the other side, hold it, and then you can reverse it. So this, Technique of hold and release, you can really, you, it's very simple uh, and uh, it's a very a simple concept that you inject saline to increase the anterior chamber depth so that the, there is space for the DM to open and then you shallow it towards the tunnel side so that the DM opens up. Okay. Thank you.